Good day everyone. I am Connie Ann Abelia, the reporter of Women and the Law. Women and the Law is the legal support to women who face daily emotional and physical violence and intimidation that isolates them from their personal and economic assets. The 1987 Constitution the Philippines is known for its very liberal and progressive constitution that was formulated during the Ropia of People Power Revolution in 1986. Gender equality is a key element of this character and as enshrined in Article 2, Section 14 of the 1987 constitution states that the state recognizes the role of women in nation building and shall ensure ensure the fundamental equality before the law of women and men. So, considering the unequal gender relations in the country, the Constitution further provided for women representation as one of the nine marginalized sectors in the legislative through the partly system, which should cover 20% of the lower house. Finally, Article 13, Section 14 specifically mentioned that the state shall protect working women by providing safe and helpful working conditions, taking into account their material function such and such facilities and opportunities that will enhance their welfare and enable them to realize their welfare and enable them to realize their potential in the service of the nation. It means all women have a safe working place for them to have a peace, peaceful office so that they have privacy in their working place. These are the various laws promoting gender equality. The legal framework provided by the 1987 Constitution resulted to various legislation promoting gender equality. The first one is the Local Government Code of 1991, provides the election of sectoral representation, including women, in local legislative councils. The second one is Party List Law, provide, provides for the competitive under the partly system, woman is one of the nine sectors identified in the law. The third one is Labor Code in 1989. Covers issues such as night work prohibition, specifies that employment must provide special facilities for women, prohibition of discrimination by reason of marriage of a woman worker. The fourth one is Women in Nation Building Law Republic Act. 7192 in 1991 is an act promoting the integration of women as full and equal partners of men in development and nation building. The law provides that a substantial portion of government resources be utilized to support programs and activities for women. Fifth one is the 1998 Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law gave people, women, the right to own land and for be sleep reverted to sons and other male family members. Next is the Republic Act 7688 in 1994, an act giving representation to women in social security community. The next one is the Anti-Sexual Harassment Law, Republic Act 7877 in 1195, an act declaring sexual harassment to be unlawful in the in employment education or training environment. Next one is the Republic Act 7822 in 1995, an act providing assistance to women engaging micro and cottage business enterprise. And the last one, Republic Act 8353 in 1997, an act expanding the definition of the crime of rape, reclassifying the same as a crime against person. These laws not only promote gender equality, but also gives protection to women's rights and enhances women's empowerment. National programs. Based on the Philippines laws stated, a myriad projects, in initiatives and processes on the gender challenge across. This includes the following. The first is the Philippine Plan 
Plan for Gender Responsive Development in 1195 to 2025. The National Plan for Women that consolidates the action commitments of the Philippines during the Beijing World Conference of Women. This is the overall frame that is also the point of reference for the discussion and monitoring of gender maintaining. The next is Gender and Development Budget or GAD. Integral of the, to the national plan, it is gain, aimed at institutionalizing gender concerns in the mainstream development process and agenda and not just peripheral programs and projects of the government. The last one is Framework Plan for Women or FPW. This part of the Philippine Plan for Women Development to focus on three trusts namely Promoting women's economic empowerment, advance and protect women human rights, and last is promoting gender responsive governance. And now, the women's right to participate. Women's right to vote was granted in 1937. The Constitution of 1935 stipulated that the right of suffrage would be extended to women only if 300,000 women voted in its favor during national plebiscite. This consolidated the emerging women's movement and brought to the fore of activism of such women as Concepcion Felix de Calderon, who formed the Association Feminista Filipina in June 1995, Rosa Sevilla de Alevero, and the young Trinidad Almeda, Miss Constancia Poblet, founder of Liga Femenia, Femene, Femena de La Paz, Pura Villanueva Calau and Paz Mendoza Guazon, Pilar Hidalgo Lim, President of the National Federation of Women's Club, and Josefa Lianes Escoda, President of the Girl Scouts of the Philippines, Ugnaya ng Kababaihan sa Politika in 1998. It turned out 447, 725 women voted yes in the 1937 plebiscite. Interestingly, 44,307 women voted against the provision. The next one is women's involvement in civil society. So women's expression of involvement in civil society should be through organizing along gender-specific issues, and formation of all women groups within board coalition as power-enhancing mechanism groups such as Filipina Feminista Movement, the militant Gabriela Women's Group, so we are familiar in Gabriela's Women. Next is the Ugnayan ng Kababaihan sa Politika o UKP Network of the Women in Politics. The last is the Kilos Cabarro Accessors Coalition and Cibol Legislative Network have trailblazed women advocacies both policies and in legislations. Then the next is women and education. The Philippine educational system is a combination of public and by private institution with a straight state providing free education for elementary and secondary levels. The constitution provides that without limiting the natural rights of parents to rear their children. Elementary education is compulsory for all children of school age in Article VIX Section 2, and there is no general discrimination of girl education, thus there is no marked differences existing in the educational status of Filipino women and men. So in overall, the laws of Filipino women and plenty from the fundamental law of the land up to existing legislation, it can be projected that more such legislation shall arise in the future. These laws are essential as they can be string board of various nations, programs, women involvements, participation and inclusion all towards the highest goal of the empowering women. That's all. Thank you.